So guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about Cubic and the Quorum, which is something that I've been learning about lately and actually understanding how decentralized and how secure Cubic actually is. And that's what we're going to cover in this video. And it's really exciting. So let's get into it. Okay, yes, yeah, so guys, we you might have seen um, recently a released video about cubic speed. So it hit 55 million transfers per second. Um, it was a really, really big deal um, and showed that cubic is one of the fastest um, platforms out there. We know it has spark contracts. We know it has decentralized apps. And I've been talking to the cubic team recently. And I've been asking them, you know, what, what other proofs are you going to have coming out in the near future? And they told me that they're going to prove everything soon. That's the whole goal is to prove everything that they'll be saying about Cubic in, in the near future. Um, so one of the things that I've been trying to understand myself is how the quorum works. Because there's not a lot of clear information on it. Um, you've got a white paper from Nick Zabo that's hard for you know a layman like me to, to read. Um, but I've been getting there. I'm beginning to understand it. And what I can say is, again, it appears to be a unique, work of genius the way this is designed um of course i could be wrong there could be other things like that out there but just from my point of view it seems to be a really unique work of genius um i'm really really clever in how it works so let's let's look at this um so part one how did miners work in the quorum so the quorum is divided into 676 members that are all called computers and um, so from this point on, because I find the term computer quite confusing. So from this point on, I'm just going to call the computers members um, because it's an easier word to understand. So I'm going to say the quorum is divided into 676 members. Let's forget about the word computer for now, but just know that's what a computer is. It's just a member of the quorum. Um, and, you know, bear in mind, this is not a super technical explanation. And I'm, I don't know everything about this, but I'm trying to just keep it simple in the way that I understand. And I'm sure then... It'll be easy for a lot of you guys to understand. So each member has equal power. No member can become more powerful than any other member in the quorum. So each of these 676 members are equally as powerful as each other. So it's not that they can become super powerful miners and one of them has an 80% power over the rest of the quorum. It's just it's equal power. So um, that each member of the quorum has a mining pool below them. So mining pool... It's basically just like if you're a cubic miner, you set up a rig, um, you know, it's something like this, a computer. So it could be just your computer at home. And then to mine cubic, you have to connect to a mining pool. Um, and that mining pool is one of these 676 people or members. You're connecting into that. And that's how you receive payment um, of cubic for mining. So there are 676 members in the quorum and each of them has a mining pool below them. That is 676 mining pools. Obviously, if every one of these 676 members has a mining pool full of people mining, so, you know, be you and a thousand other people in one pool, and then you go on to the next pool, and it could be, you know, 500 people, and then you go on to the next one, it could be 2,000 people, whatever. They're all under these um, these uh, members to quorum, and that's where you... He has 676 mining pools. And then side note, I said, I think there are actually more computers that are fighting to be in the quorum, but that is a complica is complicated and I will just make this explanation confusing. So I'm not going to touch on that and I don't understand it in detail, but I think there's more like a thousand um, computers, but only 676 of them get into the quorum and it's the 676 most efficient that get into it. So they're always competing in terms of efficiency, which is... An interesting thing, and I've got to learn more about that, but it keeps the cubic network very efficient. But let's just forget about that part and just stick with 676 members in the quorum. So then part two, how does the vote work? So when people actually have to vote on something um, in the cubic network, th this is how it works. So when someone wants to change something with cubic, they make a proposal to the quorum. So for example, recently um, they, they decided in the cubic network, a lot of things, they decided loads of things that they all went to vote, but one of them was that they wanted to reduce 
the max supply of cubic um, by 80%, so reduce it down from 1 quadrillion, so it's never going to reach that number anyway, down to 200 trillion, and have that as the new max supply. So somebody had to go and make that proposal, and then they had to go and um, they had to give that proposal and make that proposal to the quorum. And then the pro proposal has moved forward to voting, and if you're a minor, you can vote yes or no on the proposal. So just as someone, as a minor, in a, in one of these pools that we're talking about, one of these 676 pools, so just imagine yourself, you're just a person with a computer mining, um, and you can just have a vote, and you can vote yes or no on the proposal. So all miners in each mining pool under each member of the quorum cast their votes. Now, not all miners have to cast a vote, but as far as I know, all 676 members of the quorum have to cast a vote. And then the majority vote decides the quorum members' vote. So, say if there's you and two other people just in one mining pool, so there's only three of you in a mining pool, two of you vote yes, one of you votes no, then that quorum is going to vote yes. That's going to be the quorum members' vote. So, it'd be one out of 676. Um, you know, in terms of proposals, what's really good to know is that anyone... Um, I don't know, do you have to be a minor? I'm not sure how exactly that works, but anyone, as far as I know, can make a proposal to the quorum. So, for example, you could say, you could say the most crazy thing, make the most crazy proposal, and it's, it, it has to go to vote then. And it's going to be a, probably a no vote from everyone, but still, you can just make that crazy proposal. I'm guessing you have to be a minor to make the proposal, um, or maybe you have to be a member of the the quorum to make the proposal. I don't know that that for sure. But anyway, so everyone's voted at this point. So all miners that are willing to vote have voted by the deadline. And then in each pool, those miners, um, yes and no votes are totted up. And the majority in each pool decides on the quorum members' vote. So this is a good example then of how the vote works. So let's take one of the 676 members to quorum. So just one in 676. They could, for example, have 1,000 miners in the pool under them. So let's imagine 900 of the miners vote yes and 100 vote no. And you know this could be on a proposal like, um, could be something that even like, how are we going to spend some of the marketing budget that's in the computer control fund? And someone says, I want to spend it on ads advertising cubic um so then you put that to vote and then in the mining pool out of the thousand people in in just one member of the quorum's mining pool uh 900 and vote yes and 100 vote no so since the majority voted yes um that quorum members vote will be yes and they'll vote yes let's spend the marketing some of this this um on a marketing budget to run ads and that means that one out of 676 quorum votes will be yes. This process is repeated for each mining pool under each quorum member until we have votes for all 676 members of the quorum. We might end up with 400 quorum members voting yes and 276 voting no. This gives us a final quorum majority vote of yes, meaning the proposal passes. Now, really interestingly, I've... This was a mistake, and I've learned since what the mistake is, is that for anything to pass in the quorum, you need to have a two-thirds yes vote. So for this vote to pass, two-thirds of the quorum has to vote yes. So I don't know what two-thirds of 676 is. It's around 420-something, I'm guessing that it's something like that. Um, it's higher than 400, so 400 actually wouldn't be in enough as far as I understand, would not be enough to um, get the get a yes vote here. Um, so, so yeah, so you need that two thirds vote, and I'm going to explain that in a second. Why that's really, really cool in terms of security and really important, and it's got to do with um, with anti anti civil uh, defense measure, measures. So I'll talk about that in the one second, though. Um, so the bigger picture now. You know, I had to say here, before people come at me, I'm just learning about the quorum. I don't know it all in detail, but it would seem that this approach makes Cubic very, very decentralized. Not only does every miner have an equal vote, 
but the fact that the quorum will always be separated into 676 separate members means that no matter how much mining power or money an individual miner puts into the system, they can never control more than 1 676 of the whole quorum. This makes Cubic very resistant to a civil attack where an entity will try to take control of 51% of the network. Um, and the last question that pops up, um, can one entity control several computer spots and gain 51% control in that way? Well, let's talk about that in a second. So a civil attack, a civil attack is basically, again, in my stupid understanding of it, is that if enough miners get so much mining power, so, you, you know, someone someone that owns a huge, huge business that's got loads of computing power and they mine, they put so much mining power into it that over half of the, all the miners that are mining Cubic, for example, um, are from this one factory somewhere. Then when it comes to a vote, all those miners can just vote whatever they want and win the vote. Um, that that's what's called a civil attack. It's trying to actually take over a network, and it doesn't become decentralized anymore. It's controlled by one entity because they're the ones with the complete mining power, um, or f you know, fifty one percent of the mining power, so they can cast a fifty one percent vote. Now, with Cubic, since um, the quorum is broken down into six hundred seventy six separate members, it means that you. You've got miners and they're in these mining pools, but it's always broken down into one 676, uh, 60, 676 separate, separate um, entities, meaning that there's like point something percentage that you could control the network. It's It makes it almost impossible to, to make a civil attack. It makes it almost impossible to even own point whatever 1% um of the power on the network or have 0.1% power over the network. Also the fact then that you need two thirds of the votes to win um, a vote, to, to win a vote in the quorum doesn't mean that you need 51%. It means that you need more like 67% um, of the votes to actually control the network. So it's like Cubic is super, super, super civil resistant from my point of view or from my understanding of it. But of course, then as I said, the last question that pops up is can one entity control several computer spots and control 51% uh, this, this way? And my answer is I don't really know the answer to this. That's, that's my answer. But I'm pretty sure they might be able to take over a couple of computer spots, but it's going to be really difficult. Um, and I'm interested to see some more proof come out of this. But I saw Q Silver discussing this before and I think he said that it would be so expensive to control even two computer spots that makes it very difficult, excuse me, makes it very difficult and the mining, the minute the quorum recognises a malicious actor, they'll just vote them out um, and then all that money that costs you to get that position in the quorum, you're going to just get voted out and have wasted, you know, probably millions of dollars for that. But I can't answer this for definite. It's what's really important there. Um, and then, you know, just one last point on decentralization. You know, most other platforms out there, they're decentralized platforms, but then a uh, decentralized app gets released on it. But is the app really decentralized or is it just an app that's controlled by the person who created it? Now, in the Cubic Network, all apps, when they're launched, go through an IPO. So they're broken down into 676 separate um, spaces. So all apps on the Cubic Network are actually very decentralized as well. Um, I know that might be confusing what I said there, but all apps on the Cubic network are decentralized to 676 spaces. Nobody controls them. They all go through voting processes just the same as this as well. And that's just a really, really cool and exciting thing about the Cubic network as well. It does make me wonder though, will some people want to build apps on the Cubic network because they have to relinquish control over that app. But the other good side of it is that if you've got 676 shareholders in your app, that's 676 people who are motivated to make that app work and to give you financial support and and you know put a lot of effort into making it work. But that's that's an interesting thought. Um, so then in conclusion, the point here that I want to make is we know from Cubic's testing that at least in a test scenario, 
it's the most scalable layer one that we've ever seen. Um, and I know that's in a testing scenario, so let's see how it, it shapes up in the real world. But we can see that's super scalable. In terms of decentralization, if we look at the quorum and how it works and how resistant it is to civil attacks and decentralized and how decentralized the apps are on the network, Cubic has to be one of the most decentralized um, layer ones there is. It's possible that's the most decentralized. It's possible that there's some others more decentralized. I don't, I don't know. I'm not technical enough to know that. But what I do know is that it seem, seems to be very decentralized. Um, and I think it, it gets a definite, very strong take for that area. And then in terms of security from anti-civil attacks um, or in terms of civil attacks, it's, re it's like super secure, like in like almost impenetrable sort of secure. And now they're running hackathon soon, so that's going to add to the security there. So it appears to me, could be wrong, I don't know things in, you know, I'm not some genius of tech technical stuff, but from what I see, Cubic solves the trilemma in the most credible way possible. Um, it really, really solves the trilemma. And then if we see just some points of things that, that I want to kind of take off here is, so I'm, from what I see, it's very secure, but especially the hackathon is going to add to that. So it seems to be very secure, seems to be very, very decentralized, seems to be incredibly scalable. I mean, you're talking anywhere from 40 million to 100 million transfers per second probably can go way higher than that as well. So this is probably the only layer one that can serve the smart contract um, needs of the world. At least in paper, it can do that. It's very fast. Sub-second transactions are what's coming eventually first. Um, smart contracts are working perfectly from what we can see. Central apps, apps are working perfectly as well from what we can see. It's only just today introducing us oracles. So this, this layer one's got oracles as well. It's feeless. It also comes with true finality, apparently. Uh, you know, we've got to put an X there at the moment for me because I don't actually know this, but this is what they're saying. It's got true finality and it works offline. Again, I don't know this for definite. I haven't seen the proofs of this, but this is what the team is saying. It works offline, so it gets correct for that. And then it's got a governance model that's working really well, which we'll talk about in another video, but it's basically the same as this quorum and the voting and the governance that, that's operating uh, within Cubic. So it just gets all those takes right there, um, or most of them have already been proven, I think, or very close to being proven anyway. Um, if it takes all those boxes, it's already probably the greatest crypto project ever created. Um, you know, in terms of its performance anyway. Um, and then if it gets useful proof of work, if that turns out to be a thing, I mean, that's and it turns out to work well, that's incredible for this this network. That puts us so out, out far in front and takes it beyond crypto. And then if the AGI or just any of the AI stuff works out, I mean, even if it fails, but we just get some sort of chat GPT sort of AI coming out of it, I mean, that's an incredible, um, you know, an incredible achievement too. So Cubic, there's, there's no reason not to be super bullish on it. I, just couldn't be more bullish in this project um, but nothing's guaranteed in crypto and, and time will tell uh, I'll see you all on the outside guys